citizenship. Most of us have at least one. Estimate, we can estimate that a maximum of 65 million EU citizens are living in this country. We don't have a concrete number because we don't have any statistics on the British passport holders with Commonwealth background only and non-EU migrants. So let's assume most UK citizens are EU citizens. Included in this number are also those EU citizens that carry a passport or ID from any of the member states. So the citizens of this country are a truly mixed bag, really. Some will fall under the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice of the European Union. Others probably won't. In either case, the UK is estimated to provide for the third largest population among the 350 million people living in the EU. Now, what does Brexit then tell us about the Britain or better UK that these citizens live in? It is telling us that the mixed bag likes some clarification. It likes some clarity on the size of the bag, the room in the bag, and probably even its bagly neighbors. Those bagly neighbors that have moved to this country as non-UK EU citizens are set to make a group of 3 million. But depending on who you ask, that number drops to 1.4 or rises up to 5 million. The truth is, we do not know. EU citizens can travel freely between the member states and stay for three months without any declaration of their residential intentions. This is what we call free movement of people. Now, the EU's free movement law is actually really two laws, although the UK likes to pretend there's only one. So I'll start with this one. Beyond the three months just mentioned, every EU citizen can continue to live in a member state, different to the one of their origin, if they are a so-called qualified person. Qualified persons are workers, including those looking for work, students, self-employed, and the so-called self-sufficient free movers. In order to be able to reside in the host member state long term, additional requirements are in place for those two groups of qualified persons that are often abled as not contributing. These two groups are students and self-sufficient. The latter meaning that EU citizens do not have a regular income as a worker or self-employed, but also don't rely on benefits in their host member state. Pensioners are included in that as well. Now, I know this all sounds very technical, so let's call the group of qualified persons citizens with a plan. They have the plan to work, study, or simply retire. This form of free movement is the result of an EU directive which is EU law, that the member state has to take and make their own by implementing it into the domestic legal framework. The free movement law the UK tends to overlook is coming out of a treaty, European Union citizenship. Does that sound like a law? Well, Article 20 and 21 of the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union are law, European law that the member states do not have to make their own. It is added to their legal orders, so to speak. These articles tell us who is an EU citizen, but they also tell us that an EU citizen has the right to reside and move freely from one member state to another. No condition attached. No employment, contract or student number needed. You are an EU citizen? Congratulations to your get out of your member state card. So much about the general concept of EU citizenship and free movement. Coming back to the UK's perspective and take on it all. A non-UK EU citizen moving to the UK will, after five years of lawfully residing in the country, be gaining the right to remain. They can then, according to the law at this point in time, live in the UK indefinitely. Sounds simple. But of course it isn't. I mean, when is law ever simple? My colleagues and I would be out of a job if it were. <laughs> I will spare you with the full amount of small print, but let me just say this. Simply having lived in the UK for five years and not committing a crime isn't enough. 
depending on what sort of plan the non-UK EU citizens had when they moved, they will need to fulfill additional requirements, health insurance being one of them. What we've seen ever since the referendum was announced was a rise in applications for the paperwork that proves the right to reside, the so-called permanent residency documentation. Unfortunately, we've also seen a rise in applications being unsuccessful. Why am I talking about this paperwork when I'm talking about citizenship? Well, the permanent residency documents are the first step on the way to British citizenship. Those non-UK EU citizens that fulfill the requirements will need to apply for the documents first before they then can go and apply for, EU, uh, for British citizenship. While it is relatively new requirement that this particular document is needed, a proof of residence was always needed. And we do not know what status this residency document will have once the UK ceases to be a member state but it's likely to be used to distinguish between citizens with a plan, citizens without a plan, and new arrivals. Now stepping away again from the legal jargon a bit and returning to our main question, how will the maximum of 65 million EU citizens in this country be affected by Brexit? Well, as we law or lawyers always like to say, it depends. Are there citizens by pl with a plan? then it will likely take some time before the impact of Brexit is directly felt. Changing any law takes time. And detangling about 40 years of entwined UK EU law where free movement is concerned will take time as well. Citizens with a plan that cross the channel in whichever direction are adhering not only to EU but also to UK law. The picture of citizens making a plan at the moment, so that have not moved and settled yet, is bound to be complicated by the changes though. Whatever the negotiation results, the new UK-EU agreement will not allow for the straightforward and simple movement as we know it. <coughs> what about the citizens without a plan? Those that cross borders or choose not to as EU citizens only? Well. Non-EU citizens can travel in the EU, can't they? You apply for a visa when you go to Australia, the US or Russia. There's an added layer of bureaucracy, but you're not facing an insurmountable hurdle. On your holiday endeavors across Europe, you might have to get used to a different, probably longer queue. But hey, not a big deal. Maybe it is not. Maybe it is. I have to confess. I named the group of qualified persons, citizens with a plan to deceive you. To lure you into the idea that those citizens that are not qualified persons do not have a plan, or an intention to stay for longer but are rather tourists, traveling the EU on a mission to find the best coffee, wine, food. Well, there are many UK EU citizens living on the mainland and non-UK EU citizens living here that cross the border as EU citizens only with a very clear intention to reside. Some of them are spouses of British nationals that never worked or stopped working when the marriage bliss turned into family madness and they became stay-at-home parents. While maternity or paternity leave still keeps you in the worker category, you lose the status after a certain amount of time and it will be very difficult to argue that you are on maternity, paternity leave when you have a three-year-old. So some of these EU citizens are mums and dads. Others are carers as well. Again, others are volunteers or spouses of military personnel who have been traveling with their partners and could not settle. So they will be stopped from ever gaining British citizenship. So the question in the process of Brexit that Brexit is raising is, how does Brexit Britain view citizenship? It appears to be treating certain groups favorably when it comes to attaining British citizenship. Those citizens with a plan. Is somebody that has worked in the city of London for the past six years a better citizen than somebody who gave up their job to raise British citizens or to support a British citizen in an onerous job? There are a few options here for post-EU Britain, as I like to call it. Firstly, most of those non-UK EU citizens that will not fulfill the requirements become British citizens, to become British citizens are nevertheless citizens by fact. 
they have contributed to their communities, to this country, and are not being a burden to the UK as well. Simplifying the application process regarding British citizenship will allow these citizens, by fact, to gain the legal status they need to live in certainty. Alternatively, the UK could consider a unique EU Brit citizen status comparable to its history with the Commonwealth. Now, all of this is this island's business. What about those EU citizens that fled the bad weather to escape to the mainland Europe? Their situation is different as they are not all subject to one domestic jurisdiction, but rather need to look at French, Spanish or even Latvian rules regarding their right to remain. Having said that, the Court of Justice of the European Union has always been very clear on saying EU citizenship has a fundamental status and that losing one's EU citizenship needs to be legitimized. So, theoretically, UK EU citizens will lose their EU citizenship status the moment the UK ceases to be an EU member state. Practically, we will need to wait and see what the court and the negotiating parties will have to say about that. And after all, the offer of associated citizenship of the EU might well still be made to UK citizens. Thank you.